we are going to be campaigning the brand new oh, here we go anyways we're here we're here i made it this guy slept a straight six hours we left at 3 20 a.m it's currently 10 30 a.m there was a bit of traffic as soon as we got into arizona because there's some big accident they actually closed off the freeway so we took a detour and now we're behind by almost two hours but we made it dropping off my car and this will save me a lot of time from actually stripping down the undercoat paint getting ready for fab work we just dropped off our gr86 and uh the whole reason behind this is because it's going to save me a lot of time from stripping down the paint. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, shit that has to come off to get to the bare metal. This part's bare metal because I was uh, cleaning off the window glue. But uh, this is all going to come off. All this plastic is all going to come off. The rubber is going to come off. Paint's going to come off. And it'll be a lot easier to do all the fab work. Start cutting into it right away instead of wasting time to get all these guys off. Basically, my car's going to end up like this. It's uh, down to the bare metal. That way it's easier to start fabricating, uh, doing the cage and whatnot. How was our day trip to Arizona? Uh, it's nice, you know, Waffle House came back. Yeah. Not bad for a six hour drive to get Waffle House. Can I get a waffle? All right, it's six o'clock in the morning and uh, we're just about to, we're just about to leave our hotel to go pick up the chassis. It's about a seven minute drive. Roll it up, grab some breakfast for champions, and uh, head home. All right, how do I get out of here? How do I get out of this place? All right, we have about three hours to kill, so we're gonna go to Sabaku Shokubutsu. Yeah. You guys down for Sabaku Shokubutsu? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be a little bit of a tourist for the next couple of hours while we wait for the stripping company to finish off my chassis. All right, so we made it to the mechanical garden. Sabaku Shokubutsuen. Oh? On a beautiful Sunday. It's not Sunday though. That's a nice shape. Three dudes walking through a botanical garden trying to kill time. Sure you know where you're going? I don't know where I'm going. Let's go, Aww. let's turn around. We got the car back thanks to extreme metal stripping uh, they really did accommodate us um, in fact fit us fit us into their busy schedule uh, we wanted the car back mid november but now it's december but what always goes according to schedule pretty much nothing the good thing is the car looks great ready to do some fabric on it add a cage from cage kits which uh, Rob is working on right now. So that should arrive in the next couple of days, hopefully. Do that, start cutting out the back end. But anyway, let's get going guys. Gotta go home. Yeah. Sick. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. One eternity later. Got the subframe finished up, modified so that a front rack from a LS430 fits on it. Uh, it's all gusseted, clearanced for the uh, steering shaft. And I got pretty much all of the Y stab kit on except for the uh, bracing that connects the, the rear portion right there to the cross member or the body. But I'll put that on right now. One of them sitting on the floor right there. But yeah, looks good. Everything fit really good. And I just gotta get some wheel bearings, hubs, test fit some brakes, which I don't have yet. And uh, move on to the rear of the car, which I'm waiting for a subframe from Siki. Before I put the brace on, I gotta take off that uh, caster bracket that I made right before I took it to acid dipping. But otherwise, 
looking good. Still early on in the building phase, but it's still pretty exciting to see all these nice quality parts come together. ST, XTA coilovers, and Wisefab's new front steer, uh, 86 Pro Lock kit. So obviously we started a lot of work on it and uh, we actually got the chassis back from Express Metal Cleaning in Arizona about two weeks ago. And since I have started to chop out some of the rear portions of the car, getting it ready for the Radium 6 gallon fuel cell tank, uh, the rear crash bar, so that piece is gonna be gone. This is already cut out. I need to chop the whole back end off and make a crash bar. We've already test fitted the front pro level lock kit from Wisefab. And this is actually their updated version with the front mount rack. We're using LS430 rack. Of course, uh, with Toyota's partnership, we get an abundance of those spare parts. Uh, just put on the headlights just, just because. I don't want them laying around getting scratched up. Uh, our next step actually is to fit the engine in here. Uh, along with the Samsonas sequential transmission, get everything mocked up. Of course, everything's gonna have to come out again. Uh, we're waiting on our cage from uh, Cage Kits by Chair Slayer Rob. He's uh, already scanned the car, designed the cage for us. And we just gotta now wait for it. And once it comes, we'll start tacking it in, welding it up, and we can start the interior. Of course, the inside's gonna have some Sparco seats. I have a Sparco steering wheel and some other goodies. There's still a lot of unknowns about the car. Obviously, I don't have the engine in the car yet, so I don't know where exactly it's gonna sit. We still have to make the turbo manifolds on both sides. We're gonna be doing a twin turbo setup with Borg Warner. Uh, we still have to do the downpipe, intercooler setup. So there's still a ton of work that needs to be done. It's already the end of December. So it's gonna be crunch mode for the next two and a half months. Uh, our season starts in the beginning of April. so. Technically, I only have about two and a half months to get the car done, dialed, finished up, and ready for competition, uh, ready for Long Beach. Two and a half months, holy shit, that's gonna be, that's gonna go by pretty quick, so I really need to get cracking on it. Um, but the good thing is we have most of the parts coming in, um, and once the parts start arriving, assembly should be pretty straightforward. Um, I've already have a ton of experience with this chassis, and. Believe it or not, this uh, car, the new GR86, has a lot of similarities with the older FRS GT86 platform. Um, some of the minor differences include this area before it used to have like a boxed frame that went all the way to the back, but now it's seam seamed, or it's seam, it's a seam right here that's pinch welded all along from the top side to the bottom. Um, I'm still probably gonna have to hammer this in for some clearance, but uh, yeah, everything is pretty much identical to the old setup. So this will fit into the, obviously the new GR86 or even the old one. The subframe I had to uh, mock, or I had to modify using Wisefab's um, templates and they also provided the gussets so I can weld it in and fit the uh, front mount setup from the LS430. Still gotta make the steering shaft, steering column. But yeah, everything fit pretty good. So I love starting off with a fresh stripped chassis because now I don't have to spend whole two weeks taking off the paint uh, and I can just get straight to fabrication work, you know, instead of getting myself dirty. So this is pretty much bare metal. Um, the roof is aluminum, I didn't know, but it is aluminum. Uh, good thing the acid dip didn't eat through the metal. But everything is pretty much stripped down to the Bare metal, well, of course not the doors. I didn't take the doors with me to get dipped. But everything else on the inside is bare metal. That's gonna help a lot when we get to some fab work. Probably gonna have to cut out the transmission tunnel, uh, make a, another tunnel after we fit the transmission in. Got some ST shocks. That's for the back. I don't have anything on the back yet. Uh, we're waiting on our cross member from Siki for the quick change setup, but yeah. Slowly but surely. A lot of you guys are probably wondering uh, why the move from the Supra to the GR86. Originally, uh, my plan was to just be in the Supra, the GR Supra for one year, but uh, COVID kind of messed up or actually delayed the debut of the GR86 platform. And I was actually supposed to be in this car last year 
but things got delayed and uh, it is what it is. But the good thing is we got the chassis here in July, I believe, end of July of this year. Started to do some prep work, obviously got the chassis dipped. And uh, now we are 100% committed to campaigning the GR86 for 2022 and 23. So I'm pretty excited because I spent eight years with the old FRS platform and we saw a lot of success in that chassis. I pretty much know that car inside and out and couldn't be more excited to be working in this same chassis or the upgraded chassis again. Uh, this chassis is actually stiffer by almost 50% up front, 40% in the back, uh, just from the structural rigidity upgrades. So there's small, I guess there's small improvements or there's a lot of small improvements everywhere throughout the chassis that helped achieve that rigidity and so now applying that in stock form to competitive drifting is going to help out a ton i believe um, and of course throughout the years i've learned you know what works and what doesn't work with this specific platform uh, so yeah I'm pretty excited to apply all that knowledge knowledge experience and know-how into a brand new build and just ready for the new season uh, the fact that I only have two and a half months is not that exciting, but really looking forward to how this car comes out and can't wait for you guys to see it either. You know what you're doing? No. <laughs> <laughs>